Recording in progress. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Art 196, um, Introduction to Web Design, Fall 2021. Uh, anyway, today, what we will be working on is um, learning some of the basic fundamentals of page layout in web design. And more importantly, what I want to do is I want to spend most of the time um, showing you Wix, which is a, a, an online website builder, which is where you will be, begin building your first website. Um, I have my website there that we can use as an example for one of my websites. Um, before we go there, though, I want to cover some of the basics, um, basic structure that we'll be um, building starting Thursday in Dreamweaver. So um, if there aren't any questions before I get started. No? OK. So um, what you're seeing on the screen at the moment looks really kind of bare bones. It's a, and it is. It's a, it's the basic structure of the website that we will be building in Dreamweaver. Um, and if we look at this, it's really if if you think about it, it's the underlying. It's similar to the underlying structure that you would see in um, a, a high rise building that it's the framework upon which you build everything else. And that becomes really, really important. If, if that doesn't work, then the whole structure falls apart. So if we look at it, um, the basic structure of a website, I mean, um, at least the one that we will be building, is that if I look at the entire body of everything, you can see that the entire body and let's look at this in code view as well, okay, is grouped together and it's in a bundle. Um, think of it in a box, okay? Then what we also have, the first line here, that's the header. But if I look at above that one row, which hasn't been named yet. Here's the first row. This is going to be reserved for our nav bar. So um, you can have the nav bar here, or you can usually have it here. Um, in the past, nav bars have been to the on the top. They've been to the left. They've been to the right. Um, current trend is uh, to make it easy for the end user to go from one page to the next on your website <clears throat> that we just put it at your, your navigation bar at the very top. So that's what this is being reserved for. And when we um, began in lesson six, um, adding content to this basic structure, we're going to be using bootstrap elements, which um, are important because they will allow us to build a website that is responsive meaning that you know, it looks one way on a large screen, it looks another way on a tablet, and it looks yet again another way on your, um, uh, your, your smartphone. So that's important these days. Um, it's not a, a one size fit, fits all the old school where it was just one size and that was it, and then it would shrink down for the other sizes and it, uh, ta uh, screens and that just doesn't work anymore. So first line again is gonna be for our nav bar. The next line down here is going to be for the header. <clears throat> and header is an HTML5 element or um, div that we can use. Uh, I'm sorry, tag that we can use. And um, headers along with navs <clears throat> are important elements to your page because the header <clears throat> generally is like a masthead <clears throat> on a magazine or a newspaper, and that it usually contains your logo. It contains um, uh, basic graphics that are on every page that identify the website as yours. It's the, you know, a, a, a continuous uh, constant graphic that allows us to, to know that we are in a, a specific place. So that goes next. 
The next one down is the main row. So we can see that this is broken down so far into rows. But if I click in here, and this is the main row, but if I click on the asides, um, over here on the DOM, I can click that I have an aside to the right or to the left. I have an aside to the right. And I have my main article and content to the left. So this little line here, this little row, is where we're going to put all of our main content of that we will will change from lesson to lesson to lesson after lesson seven. We'll be adding different forms of content. Then the very last row that you see at the bottom here, I'll go ahead and I'll select that last row down here. This will be the very last row is going to be um, the uh, footer of our page. And footers, uh, again, are an important element. They're probably the least important, but they're um, this, in this day and age, pretty much uh, a standard element on a, on a website in that it generally puts the copyright information. If there is a webmaster, it puts in, uh, you, that's where you would put your um, email to be able to contact with that person who's in charge of the website. And if um, there is any date sensitive information on the website, that's generally where um, uh, it will be noted that when the, the, the website was last updated. Um, I don't know how many of you use websites to do uh, research for your papers and English and history and that sort of thing, but it's important that you use current um, information and the websites that you go to should list, you know, when it was last updated. If they don't, then that means that the information on it is kind of generic or is not sensitive to dates. Now, once we complete this in lesson five, which will be starting on, um, on Thursday, um, when we start to work on lesson six, this is what it's going to look like. You can see that that basic structure um, still holds true, that we have it along the top. We have this is where we're going to insert our navigation bar. This is the header right here. And then this is the main row and where we put most of our content. We have a left aside where you can put quotes, you can put ads. It's generally the asides or left for ancillary information, not the main um, or meat of your, your, your website, the main content. That's left for the article in the middle here. And then here's the footer at the bottom. As I said, we put the copyright information. So this is what we're gonna start building this Thursday. Now, having shown you that, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna jump to, I presume everybody can see this or not. There we go. If you can't, please let me know. Okay, This is my Wix website. So let me show you what it looks like. Um, if I go back to, uh, let's click here, make sure that I have this. Uh, there we go, go all the way back. And da -da 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 -da, here is Wix. So here is my homepage. And this is what the published page looks like. So let me start by explaining to you that when you go to Wix and you set up an account, um, make sure that you just use the freebie. You don't have to pay for anything just yet. But if you look at the top here, you can see that the address or the URL to my website doesn't exactly roll off your tongue. It's HTTPS, okay, colon, backslash, backslash, kirkmillerart.wixsite.com slash my hyphen site hyphen one. It doesn't really roll off your tongue, but that's what you get for free, okay? And once you complete your Wix website, you're going to put this, put the link to your website 
in an email and email it to me. And that's what I'll use to view it and to grade it. Um, but what you can is what you can see here, we've kind of combined or I've kind of combined my header and nav into one. So I have my header, which is really kind of understated. <clears throat> it's the for my first page it just has my name and the title of my website. And then you can see here, here's our own, my home page. Here's my about page that tells a little bit about me, about the artist, my artist statement and my biography. And then I have a contact page. So this would be a way of getting in touch with me. If you want, you could put in your name, email, subject and message, and you could send it to me. Just submit it and you're ready. Now, all of these forms um, in, on Wix, you just are drag and drop. The way that you add the text is drag and drop. But I have three pages here. What I did is I condensed two of the pages. I used my home or slash page also to be um, used for my portfolio page. Now, this little slideshow here, again, is something that's already pre-made that you drag and drop and you insert your own images. They have um, placeholder images and placeholder text for most everything on their website. Um, what I want you to do is start with the placeholder information, but then go ahead and put in your own. Um, it's, I kind of, for, especially for those of you who are photographers, who are artists, who are designers, um, my approach to, to web design is, is to most design here, is that it's um, kind of a minimal approach. I like to showcase the art or the design, um, the photography over anything else. So I like to make sure that the rest of the website is understated and, I, and the viewer looks mostly at the artwork and really not much else. So to do that, what I think you should do, and this would be even if, um, I don't know, this was for your vacation, you know, you were showcasing your vacation, that your home page, which is also sometimes called your splash page, um, um, I like just using one big image on that page to grab the viewer's attention. Okay, then if they're interested and they, you know, like what they see, then they will start to click on the other pages to view the rest. Okay, if they don't like what they see, then they'll move on and that's it. But if you make the, the first, your first page too complicated, too intricate, too much, you know, too busy, too much going on visually, then it will be difficult for the viewer to, um, to kind of um, to distill in their mind what really this website is about. And so um, again, that's my approach to design. And I think it's a pretty good one because once you grab their attention, then they'll, and, and if they like what they see, they'll move on and uh, look at the rest of, the, of what you have to offer, okay? Otherwise, um, it's sort of like a, a, an approach the way you would handle a billboard. Billboards, you know, when you're traveling on the freeway at 65, 75 miles an hour, you don't have time to really um, stop and look at the billboard carefully. You have to be able to see it and um, absorb it in about a, you know, a second or two, and that's it. Um, otherwise, you're going to get in a serious accident. Well, even though, you know, staring at this website, you're not going to get into a serious um, accident um, as you would, you know, if you're driving down the freeway, um, it's important that you take on the same approach to your design because there's just too much competition um, on the web. And um, to be able to grab someone's attention and keep it for more than a few minutes is really important. So again, that goes back to my approach to design, you know, starting with a, an important splash page. Then what you're gonna need to do, um, it could be on the same page that you scroll down, or I've chosen to put mine on a separate page. 
And I, you know, you don't have to have a background image. The image could be set apart and separate. That's just how I chose to um, lay out mine. But you should have a little biography, a little bit about yourself. Um, what I would like, um, it would be ideal, at least for your final website, is to have um, um, a resume, um, even if it's a bare bones, you know, minimal resume, it would be important because I think this would be something that you can walk away with from the class and use after the class is over. And then the very last thing, have a contact page so that if someone is interested in what they see, they can get in touch with you. So that's the content that you will need. Now, once you set up your Wix website, this is what it's gonna look like once you've done. You can see that I have here, I, I go to my um, dashboard and you can see that um, it shows here that um, this is my first site, um, shows that I'm all set and has suggestions for you and analytics and that sort of thing. If I want to edit this, then I click on this little button right here. So what you're going to have to do is really kind of grope your way through this. There are no tutorials for Wix websites. They expect you just to kind of, um, kind of, uh, you know, go through it on your own and get a sense of what you know, how the thing works. So this, in fact, is, is, is a different one that I have. That's not the one that I want, but that's okay. Because what we can do is we can go back in and we can edit it. What I wanted is, let's go back to, I want, I want, I want, I want. Let's go back, let's see if it's this one. Um, because I have two Wix websites. Every semester I try to create a brand new one. And this isn't the one that I wanted. Oh shoot, I hope I didn't close it by mistake. Um, anyway, you can see, yeah, this one is a little bit different because this one I have the resume, I have the about page, I have a portfolio page and I have a contact page. So this one is a little bit different. Now, now that I'm in the edit mode of this, I can go in here and I can change each one of these. I can look at the plus button and I can add. And you can see I can add a page if I want. I can add a header. These are, you know, if I go to services, if I go to contact, these are the contact elements that I can add. This is what I added for that other one. If you want to welcome, you know, to your page, if you ha have testimonials that you want to add to your page. If you are a part of a team or a group or a band or something that you want to include information for everybody, you have that. If you're going to include text, okay, you want to add a heading. Remember, we talked about headings. We have headings one through six. So here's heading one. If you're going to add titles, they offer many more um, fonts than what is usually available in web design. If we're gonna add paragraphs, how do you want your paragraph to look? If you're gonna add images, we can roll over that and there are different ways that you can um, add. There are some free Wix images. I think these are good to use as um, placeholders, but I think it would be better Later on, once you've used them and you have your basic layout in, in place, then go ahead and substitute with your own images. And more often than not, the images that you take with your smartphone will be more than, um, than adequate. If you want to add the social, you know, for your social websites, these buttons, we can do that. If you're going to add buttons, Notice that they have a whole slew of different styles already built for you. If you want to add um, a gallery, um, that would be equivalent to my slideshow. There's a whole bunch of different approaches that you can take. And again, they're just, um, you just drag. And as, it's, as you can see, when I roll over it, it just says drag and drop. Okay. 
and you just take it and drag it and drop it in place. So there's pro galleries, there's grid galleries, there's slider galleries, and there are more galleries, different approaches. Again, some of these are a little bit too fancy, I think. These with the little diagonal checkerboard and this one with a kind of zigzag approach. Um, I don't know, it's just a little bit too much for my taste. But if you find that it's appropriate for your gallery, you know, you use this 3D carousel, for example. Um, that was kind of fun. It was available years ago when we used to use Flash for our websites. Um, you know, this one is also kind of fun too. It's a 3D slideshow. And this one is kind of more of a freestyle, like stacked on top of one another. I like just simple slideshows. Just show it to me and we're done. If you need some decorative elements, um, just go through each of these one by one. If you want to add a background box, that's all you have to do. And you can edit each one of these. You're not stuck with the colors that they provide for you. If you want to add video or music, um, you can do that. If you have a YouTube channel, if you have a Vimeo channel, if you want to add elements from Facebook, you can do that from here. These are really very... Um, straightforward now um, and easy to experiment with. Now, notice the menu here. I have a very simple menu at the very top, my um, nav bar here. But if I wanted something a little bit more colorful here, or if I wanted to use a different typeface, again, I could just add or drag and drop any one of these. So let's um, give one of these a whirl. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I'm going to get out of this mode. So I'm going to come back here. And I'm going to um, hold on here. I have to grow up through here. Oh, this is what I want to show you. This is for a large screen. They don't um, create their, their websites for um, uh, tablets. But you can see what it's going to look like when it's going to be on a, a smartphone. So this gives you these little buttons up here, give you an idea of what it's going to look like. Now, um, yeah, before I, I go on to create a new one, um, you'll notice that we have tools over here. We can bring up a toolbar if we want. OK, so let's close that. And again, if you hover over any of them, it just says, you know, if there's an element that you want to copy, you do. If you want to paste, you click that. If you move over here and if you want to duplicate an image or an element, you select that. If you want to delete an, an, an element, then select that. We can adjust the weight, width, and the height from here. We can also work more intuitively that if you feel that the, the header that you have here and the nav is once that needs to be um, switched, notice how I can change the size of all of this here just by clicking and dragging. It's really kind of nice. Okay. So if you want those tools, you can get rid of them. Now I can go ahead and I can close that toolbar. We can look at layers. And you can see that I have a header and I have the main content and then I have my footer. So all those elements that I was talking about that are, you know, the basic structure of a website are shown here. And you know they should exist on your website, your web page. So let me see if I can't get started with one of these and um, come back in here. And I want to exit. I don't want to publish this because it's already been published. So and I don't want to update. I'm going to go to my site, and I'm going to exit editor, right there, and it's going to take me back to my dashboard. And now what I can do under my site is it says I can go to all sites or I can come up here and I can create a new site. So let's try that. Okay, just a minute. We're fixing something here. We hope to be back in a minute. So hopefully we're in good shape. Um, what kind of site are you creating? So um, I'm going to select portfolio. And I'm going to go next. 
um, that Wix ADI create a website for you or create your website with the editor. I'm going to use this. So let's edit a template. And then you scroll through all of your templates and you decide you know, which one would be best for you. Now, as I said, some of these here, if you look at the one to write for Illustrator, um, it works, but you know, I think you're kind of giving away the, the store, so to speak, at first glance. You would be showing the viewer all that you can do rather than entice them. I think this is more appropriate. For example, the fashion designer approach to show one image that really would entice the viewer to view more. If you're an art director, that would be a good one. We can go to another page. Here's an interior for interior designers, but they could be for photographers. You know, if you're a, consider yourself a videographer, maybe you would want to use one of these. Again, we have other approaches for illustrators. They have lots and lots of templates to choose from. So let's go to page three, see what we have. Um, architects, art directors, graphic designers. Um, if you're a model, I don't know. Artist. Yeah, this one, I don't know. This is more of a craftsperson than an artist, I think. And we can go to the last page here. So here are all of the templates. Let's let me go back to the first one. I'll back to the beginning here. Um, which one should I pick here? Let's pick this one. Remember I said I like kind of understated approaches. So let's go ahead and view this one, or let's just go ahead and edit this one. And this is the template that we're going to use. Now, if you don't like that, you can always switch and use a different one. So it's taking a couple of seconds here to load, load this. So here we have, okay. Now I don't need to add anything, but you know, they're using some default default text here. Now, instead of using their nav bar along the top, they're kind of going old school and they're putting the nav bar along the left. And that's okay. If you want to leave it to the left, leave it to the left. If you would rather put it along the top, put it along the top. Um, the reason that nav bars are usually at the top or the left, but no longer at the right, is that when you resize your screen in a, um, in a browser, the top and the left are always constant. They're always there. And if you put it on the right, if you're not careful, um, then what happens is that it gets covered up and then the end user is unable to, to see what's going on um, and will not intuitively know how to change. So let's go ahead and let's edit the text. See, by clicking on the text, it says, I want to edit it. So I'm going to change that and I'll put in Kirk Miller. There we go. So that's all you're going to do. This is kind of the direction that um, web building um, has gone for, for most users is that they're using the online websites, uh, website builders like Wix. If you want something that's a little bit more upscale, um, what you can do that had the, I think the, it's a little bit more sophisticated is Squarespace, but it does cost you. Um, it's a monthly fee, I believe. Um, let's go ahead and let's look at the image. I'm gonna go ahead and let's see if we can't change the image and see if I have something already in line. So I can start using one of my files that I have on my um, computer. So let's go ahead and upload um, a media here. So I'm gonna upload from my computer. And remember, based on what we had done before, let's try, um, I'm gonna view this from, da, 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 da. I want this to be 
let's look at in columns so I can see what image I'm pulling up. So let's go ahead and just use this image. I'm going to go ahead and open it. Okay, so I uploaded it and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose the image. I'll go ahead and use it, put it in place. Now I need to, you know, move this around a little bit or I need to resize my image because notice how it's cropping some of it off. If I'm happy with the placement of that, then it's fine. It would be okay. Um, again, I'm going to select instead of the, uh, the navigation that they have here, instead of manufacturing, um, I would um, instead, I'm going to edit that and I'll, I'll make this about, or I could go ahead and we could move my bio up here. Okay. And again, instead of manufacturing, I'm going to go ahead and edit that. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to rename this instead, not bio. I want to rename manufacturing here. So let's click here. If you want to add a page, right down here. So instead of manufacturing, I'm going to click here and I'm going to rename it. And I'm going to name it resume or curriculum vitae, whichever you want. And I'll click done. And then under here, I'll name this one portfolio. So I'm going to rename this one portfolio. And then this one I'm going to rename and this will be my about, or not my about, what am I saying? This is gonna be um, my contact page. So I'll rename this one contact. And I don't need the other two. So when I'm done with this, I'll take this page and I'll click here and I'll delete it. I'll take this one and delete it. Now, when I'm done with this, we can see how this is going to look. Notice that it's already updated. Um, I think the type that they've used is elegant. It might be a little bit small for most people. But what I can do is I can preview this, I can publish it. And once you publish it, because you're publishing it to their servers, it's ready to view, you're done. I'm gonna give you guys a few weeks to work on this, three to four weeks, in fact. Because um, what I want you to do is start with their um, default text and images. I want you to play with some different layouts and some different templates. And then I want you to go back in and substitute your own images, your own content. So this could be a very useful website for yourself. So let me go ahead and preview this and see what this is going to look like. So it takes it all away. And if I click on the bio page, notice that it goes here. And it just, they have Greeking in here. I'm a paragraph. Click here to add your text and whatever. I could come in here and edit this. And this would be a good one for my resume. So I should have looked more carefully. This would be a good resume page. If I click on resume page, so I probably should have looked at them a little bit more carefully. And I can substitute, you know, this is a good one for, would be a good one for my um, portfolio page instead. Well, I can rename the pages and reorder them. So when I'm done looking at it, I can go back to the editor. Now let's say um, I didn't, I don't want um, uh, this particular text here. I don't like that text. Now this is a heading four. Remember, if I want it a little bit bigger, I could try heading three. I'm going to leave it as a heading four. So I'll click here again and go back to heading four. Um, if I don't want Times New Roman, I can click here. And we have all these other typefaces to choose from. Um, you know, if you want Bodoni poster, 
You can select it. When you're done, you're done. My recommendation to all of you is that you only use maybe two, three different fonts at most. Um, keep it simple. That is my strong recommendation. Um, pretty much stick to their grid and um, have at it. It's just, you know, one little click at a time and um, just go through it smoothly and slowly like I've been doing. And before you know it, you'll have a, a, an interesting website, I think. And if you want, I can always go back, see if I want to undo the last thing that I did, I can go back to that. If I want to undo again, I can go back. If I want to redo, I can click here. You can zoom out um, and reorder if you want. Again, we have tools here. We have tools to the left. They make it very, very easy for you, very easy. And again, every time you edit a page, you should check and see what it looks like on, when, on mobile mode. Okay, and you can see that they're working with the little hamburger symbol here. So that when I click here, it will take me to another. I have a little up arrow. I can scroll back and forth. Now let's go back if I can. Skip this and let's go back to the full screen. There we go. Um, these are quite elegant, I think. They're at least this template that I've chosen. Now, in addition to that, um, later on this semester, something to think about. This, these are all separate pages that I've used. But if you want, um, when we when we get to Mobi Rise, um, this is a drag and drop approach, but we build it um, similar to on, on our computers, similar to what we're doing with Dreamweaver. But what I've done here is that I've created, <clears throat> um, I have my four pages, but it's all on a single page. So what I've done is I've created anchor tags here. So if I, this is my home page, but if I go to About Us, it just simply scrolls down. And I have these nice little twirlies here that um, condense the type, the same type that I'm using or the text that I'm using um, for the Wix website, but it makes it a little bit um, uh, more, say, yeah, con yeah, just that condensed. It doesn't take up quite so much space. Um, these are um, Elements that can be added in Dreamweaver as well. They are um, bootstrap components that we will get to. It's at the very end of class around lesson 12. And then if I want, I can go to my portfolio and that scrolls up to here. And again, there's different kinds of portfolios in Mobi Rise, just as in the Wix examples that you saw. That all you have to do is click and it enlarges it. And then I can scroll through forwards or backwards, and I can click up here to, to get out of it. And then again, if I want to go to my contact page, it takes me here. And um, we can put in it, it just ready to use. Um, I just dragged and dropped this in here. And you can put in your name, the person's name, uh, end user can put in their email, phone if they want add a message and send it. And there's features in here that allow you to make sure that it sends it to you and not to Moby Rise's website. And then the very last <clears throat> website that we'll create in um, Dreamweaver will be similar to, but not as robust as the one that I have created um, for my personal website. So if I go to kmart66.com, it'd be like this, okay? So again, I have drop-down menus and each of these will, um, Wix or Mobi Rise will allow you to add drop-down menus if you wish. And again, that's a way of simplifying and condensing your navigation. So instead of 
you know, having five links up here for Kirk's classes, they are hidden underneath this drop menu, drop down menu. And the same for the five that are underneath my personal one. Okay. And then you can link to external websites. And that's what this one does. So if I click here, it takes me to one, this one that I have, which is nothing more than a slideshow of my virtual gallery that I created. Um, I created the gallery inside uh, Lightwave, but um, created the website for this using MobiRise as a you know quick way of building that. Okay. So that's um, pretty much um, all I wanted to talk about today. Um, do you guys have any questions for me before we leave today? Because what I want you to do is to go to, to Wix. So if we go, if I, I'm just going to add a new little button here. And I'm going to go to Wix.com. But I already have an account, so it's going to log me in as me. Okay, it's just taking me to where I am. But where if I were to log out of this, let's see if I can't log out. So let's just go ahead and log out. There we go. This is what you're going to see. Get started, you know, and then once you have an account, then you can sign in and you can create multiple um, websites if you wish. And if you want to explore before you do, so if I go ahead here to get to click to get started, you just have to put in your email address. You need to create a password for yourself. Make sure that it says remember me, just because so I forget passwords all the time. If you want to continue using, because I don't use Facebook anymore or any of these, you can do that. That will help you to log in. And once you do, then you'll get um, what I have here. You'll, you know, once you have created your website, you're going to have the dashboard and it'll allow you to go in and edit it just as I've done. Okay. So take some time to explore. Um, it is all very intuitive. As I said, there really aren't any tutorials for this, but I think it's a good way for you to get, to take the time to um, work with a basic web layout um, and take the time to construct a website for yourself with not worrying about the code not worrying about HTML or CSS because it's already doing, you know, doing it for you. Um, but to focus more on the content, you know, what do you need to, to build and to create prior to finishing the website? Because to actually build it using their placeholders won't take you um, very long at all. But then to go ahead and to create your own about content, you know, your own about page, to create um, images for your own portfolio if you don't have them set up already to take the time um, to photograph some things, to be able to use your own images will take a little bit of work. Then once you have those already in place, then when we switch to MobiRides, you'll be able to use the same images, the same content, but you're gonna construct your website using a slightly different set of tools. And then when we switch once again for the final website using Dreamweaver, again, you'll have all of the, the content, again, in place, ready to go. Um, but then you'll use the template that we will have constructed from the lessons and you'll substitute. You'll take your content and you're going to replace the content that we used in the lessons with your own. And then you're going to go back in. And now you're going to have to do it manually and you're going to have to change the, um, the CSS, the style sheet to conform to your particular um, uh, website and to change the colors, change the fonts, change the images so that it's more suited to your needs. Okie doke. So if there aren't any questions today, let me um, check. I'm going to pause the recording here. Uh, 
So, yeah, so this class is basically an overview of web design. Um, I give you or want you to have the experience of working with um, uh, web builders that are online that are a little bit more intuitive. And it's really the way that web design for most people have gone lately. Also, um, working with web builders like MobiRise, which allows you to build your website on your computer, but using their templates, their drop and drag elements to customize something for yourself and then upload your um, your site to a, your, the host and publish it that way. And then the last way that we'll, we're gradually we'll get to is the Dreamweaver. Um, we will be doing, as we're doing the lessons, you're going to be working with Wix and then Moby Rise. And once we've completed most of the lessons, um, actually after we've completed maybe lesson seven or eight, um, you'll have enough knowledge of Dreamweaver to be able to start building your own from scratch or using the, the lessons that we've, that we've created as a template to go back in and then substitute your own content with that. So it gives you pretty, a, you know, the class, I hope, gives you a pretty um, broad, um, you know, experience of, of web design. And then if somebody comes to you and says, I'm, I want you to build a website and I don't have any money, then maybe you're going to do it in Wix for them, or you're going to do it in Mobilize. And if they have more money or they want something that's really customized, you'll be able to go into Dreamweaver and build it for them. Okie doke. So that's all I have for you guys for today. And then Thursday, we're going to start to work on lesson five. Okay. Yeah, you're going to make three completely different websites, but you can use the same content. We'll start with Wix. You're going to go to Moby Rise, and then the last one will be in Dreamweaver. If you want to use different content, be my guest. But you know, look at you know what I've done. I have my personal website here, but and I also have my Wix website. Um, let's see, let's go here. I don't want that. Hold on here. And I have now nah, I wasn't prepared for this. Anyway, um, I have all three that basically is the same content with slight variations. So, you know, the one that I created in, you know, using Dreamweaver. The one that I created using um, Wix, and then the other one that I created using Moby Rise. But most of the content is the same, just slightly different format, slightly different um, uh, layout. And then when you finish creating the Wix website, you're going to email me at kirkmillerart at gmail.com. Um, you'll put in the subject, you're going to put in your name, Art196, Wix website, and then in the content, you're going to put the link to that website that you created in Wix. Does that make sense, Sebastian? Yeah. Then I'll be able to grade it and give you some feedback. So it doesn't hurt to, um, you know, don't wait until it's absolutely finished. Um, if you want some feedback before I grade it, I can make some. Oh, yeah. When you've completed the website in Wix, what you will need to do is email me the link to your website. So if I come back here and we connect to my website here in Wix, okay? You notice that this is my URL up here. This is what you'll email me so that when I click on that link, it will take me to your website. So in uh, you'll mail, 
email me at kirkmillerart at gmail.com. In the subject, you will put your name, Art196, Wix website, and then in the main content, all you'll need to put is this link. So all I have to do is open up your email, click on it, and look at your website and see if it works. And see how you've laid it out and the content that you've used and that sort of thing. Okie doke. Anyone else? Oops, I didn't want that. Let's go back. There we go. Go here. Yeah, see, this one was altogether different than the one. I don't like this one. This is a different example of work contact. So I've, I've, over the years, have created tons of these. Okay, so that's it for today. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording. I'm going to say goodbye. You guys are free to leave. And I will see everybody um, Thursday. We'll be working in Dreamweaver on Thursday in class. Okay.